All right, another rant video out here this morning, taking a walk through the woods. Going to cross over from one area here to a, over that way. Um, let me know what you think of my little woods walk rant videos. Um, the problem that I have a lot of times is that I, uh, I end up having thoughts come to me and I think, yeah, I should probably do a video on that. You know, do a sermon or something like that and I kind of write it down or whatever. And Sometimes I get to it and sometimes I don't. Things come up in life, you know, and, and I can't always get back around to doing videos. So, but if you like these videos of me coming out here and walking around through our property, um, let me know. Let me know what you think. And I will continue or cease and desist. Uh, it's just that a lot of times, if I don't do little videos like this, um, my ideas and my thoughts get kind of lost in uh, all the other stuff that goes on at the ministry and in our personal lives as well. And uh, speaking of our personal life, um, went right through a spider web there. <laughs> uh, we're having a lot of issues with our with our Jeep, um, our Jeep Cherokee, and. Uh, it's let us sit now, I don't know how many times. Went and picked it up from the garage yesterday. He went through the whole thing, checked it all out, um, put it on a fuel pressure gauge, and it's got plenty of pressure. And I mean, went through the whole thing, checked all of it out, uh, checked the fuel filter, checked the fuel pump, checked, I mean, everything, and no problems. He drove it about eight miles, never shut down for him. And, uh, so I went and as inspected, passed inspection, uh, didn't need anything. And uh, so went and picked it up yesterday morning and thought, well, I'll drive to the gas station. Had about a quarter tank of gas in it. Driving down the road, I got about maybe, I don't know, three miles away from the garage and <laughs> shut off. I thought, you have to be kidding me. So I limped it along to the intermediate school and um, left it there in the parking lot had to go back to the garage and when he opened up because I picked it up about 7 30 in the morning and when he opened up I said you know well bad news it broke down again so I have no idea uh, it's starting to try my patience now um, I don't know what's going on with it could be just some bad gas uh, could be something, I don't know. But I um, wanted to do a real quick video here, real quick, you know, quote unquote. Usually when I get to ranting, it doesn't go very quick, but I'll try to make this to the point because I've been thinking a lot about this as I'm going through this hymn book, you know, I'm reviewing this hymn book um, that was sent to us. Thank you again to anybody, to whoever that was that sent it. I don't remember the name right now. It escapes me, I could look it up. But uh, um, this hymn book thing, I'm going through it, and there are so many hymns that just, just are so beautiful, and the lyrical content of these old hymns is just, it's poetry, it's, it's beautiful. And I would say is second to the scriptures. You know, you have to be careful, some of them, you know, you get holy, 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 and it's based on the Nicene Creed. And God in three persons, blessed trinity, that's an issue. We just, you know, um, we rewrite it. You know, we like the hymn, but we just rewrite it, you know, and say, Jesus is the Lord and not a trinity. <laughs> that's what we do when we have to sing it. When we get to it, when, you know, because we'll go through the hymn book. Um, every night we read a chapter of the Bible before we go to bed and sing a hymn and the whole hymn um, and uh, Oliver has learned a lot about the old hymns and, and he can sing a lot of them from memory because we've been singing the hymns as a family now for years ever since he was born basically and I used to sing to him sing the hymns when he would be in a little carrier on my chest and I'd be washing the dishes or doing other work around the house or something and and um, so he's been raised with the old hymns and he loves the old hymns, but a lot of you haven't. 
which brings me to the title of this video, which you obviously can see, and that is Christianity is always one generation away from extinction. Um, kind of an interesting thing, uh, because, and there's no trails out here, by the way, just to make that kind of plain if you can't tell, just walking through the woods. But um, years ago, my family, we had uh, some family friends of ours, the Gordleys, and the husband, his name was Jim Gordley. They were missionaries to Central and South, or Central America, excuse me, Mexico, and then Costa Rica, and Panama, and I forget where they ended up being. They're back in America now. They're older. Um, but uh, and I remember Jim Gordley made that statement. Christianity is always one generation away from extinction. And, you know, got to thinking about that. And what he meant was, um, if a generation that's older does not pass what they've learned down to the younger generation, and if the younger generation is not receptive to what the older generation knows, if they're not respectful to older people, then that, a lot of the beliefs and teachings of Christianity um, come to naught. Uh, not because they are not of God, it's just because people don't care to remember. And that's the tragedy of this whole thing. You know, as I'm going through this hymn book, it has the hymn name and everything, and then it, it actually has uh, the, the year that it was written. And, and uh, it's just amazing going through and looking and seeing the name of the person that wrote this hymn and, um, and the year and seeing this one was written in 1652. This hymn was written in 1736. This one was written in the 1800s. This one's written in the early 1900s. And, and to have that fellowship of the Spirit and you know, this has been around for hundreds of years. And I can relate completely to what this hymn writer is saying. Completely. And it's such a blessing. You know, and, and the strength of these Christians in the past. It's just amazing to tap into that and realize we're all one in the body of Christ. Um, such a neat thing. I was reading actually that there, the hymn, Day by Day, uh, was written by a young woman. And um, the story went that she was sickly, I guess, and that she would spend her time with her father and in his office, and she would read quite a bit. And that um, she started to write hymns, I guess, or something, and she was getting into that. And they had to go someplace on a boat. And so this young woman, um, she... Uh, was there on the boat with her father and a bad storm came up and it got the, the deck was really rocking back and forth and at one point in time the I guess a wave must have hit the boat or something and it really knocked the boat hard and it knocked her father overboard and she ran over to the edge and held on and she watched her father drown just terrible and from then on, she became an atheist and said, I was raised in a church and it's a cult and I, I hate it. And it no. She uh, penned the hymn day by day. You know, and day by day and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, <clears throat> I've no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure Gives unto each day what he deems best Lovingly it's part of pain and pleasure Mingling toil with peace and rest <sighs> Man, I'm having to fight back tears. It's just, how could you write a thing like that? I mean, <clears throat> wouldn't you be bitter? Wouldn't you just say, God, why would you do that to me? I can't understand why... No, I'll just sit down and write a hymn to praise God. What, and what do you have like that with modern CCM stuff? Just a bunch of garbage, just a bunch of feelings and this stuff. And now's the time to worship or something. Gag me. Ugh. And, you know, it is well with my soul. I mean, um, 
um, another amazing hymn. A man lost his all of his children. The boat went down at sea, and the only one that survived was his, was his wife. Lost his son to scarlet fever, then lost his uh, his three little girls out at sea. You know, just amazing the the spiritual power of those old hymns. Uh, Joseph Scriven, what a friend we have in Jesus after he lost two different women that he was going to marry. The loves of his life, you know, and uh, lost one, I think it was in Ireland. Then he went to Canada to restart his life. Met a girl over there and fell in love with her. And and uh, then she passed away. Just amazing stories, and yet they, they love the Lord through it. But if you have, if you don't have that, if you weren't raised that way, if you don't care about older ways, um, you're not really following biblical Christianity. And that's why a lot of people, they start to get doubts about the King James Bible because they say, well, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know if we can trust it. And maybe people have been wrong for hundreds of years. Um, it's more than just textual variation and, and how should it be properly translated and this word here could have been translated. The, the Bible version issue is far deeper than that. The Bible version issue is about connecting spiritually with that book. Testing and proving that Bible. And saying how this thing works out. And uh, son and dog over here. That's what you're hearing there. I'm not going to be attacked by a wild animal. <laughs> Although he does get kind of wild sometimes. But uh, but what I'm trying to say is um, if you don't understand the connection between the old hymns and the Christians of the past and the King James Bible and how that Bible was there to strengthen them and encourage them and how they went through horrible times sometimes. And if you don't understand that, then you'll fall for the lies of the devil about the King James Bible not being God's perfect word. But if you see it and you understand, we go back hundreds of years. And before that, you had you know, people that held to the true text of Scripture, small groups of uh, heretics, according to the Catholic Church, and we were persecuted and we were hunted down and whatever else, and yet we had strength. Going the holy back to the first century before the Roman Catholic was, Church was established in, uh, by Constantine in the 4th century. But if you don't have that history, that connection to the past, then you'll fall very easily. Um, you'll be like the people, the, the seed that's, that's you know, sowed on stony ground, and it doesn't have any root in itself. And when persecution and, and things arises because of the Word, they get offended and they fall away. Oh yeah, I was in Denlinger's cult for a while. I don't have a cult. Okay, and if you have some kind of a cult surrounding me, well then you're in sin. Um, <clears throat> I, I fell for that King James only stuff for a while, but then I got out of it. And I went to church for a little bit of time, and then I eventually just quit it and everything else. You know why? Because there's no connection with the past. There's no emotional connection. Um, my beliefs in Scripture is that the Bible is God's love letter to me. It's God's uh, provision to me to help me through those rough times. And the hymns are a second close companion to that because it's the testimony. The Bible says about that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of Jesus. The hymns are the testimony of Jesus. Writing and singing about your Savior. You sing because you're happy. You sing because you have joy. Not out of duty. You know, people that sing out of duty, it doesn't sound that great. But you have people that sing out of a heartfelt conviction. That's a testimony right there. And people sing about Jesus Christ. They sing about their Savior. And you can look at it, you can read the lyrics and sing a song that was written hundreds of years ago. And it just has just as much application to you today. You know, how about... Uh, and though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us. A mighty fortress is our God. Um, ein fester Bug ist unser Gott. Gott. 
see if I can say that correctly, to say it the original German there. Written by Martin Luther in the 1500s. Is this world filled with devils? Yes. Is it threatening to undo us? Absolutely. But uh, what connection do you have if you don't know those old hymns? If you don't read the testimonies of God's people down through the centuries and you just say, oh, we don't need to think about the past. Um, forward, onward, forward. Let's just forget everything from the past. Let's just get rid of everything from the past. Uh, that's not right. It isn't right. Um, asking for the old paths is the is the thing that you're supposed to do when a nation's falling apart. You don't say, well, yeah, we have to abandon everything from the past that we knew was right, and then we have to move forward to the new normal. The new normal is a satanic philosophy. It's saying that uh, evolutionary, that we get better with time. Things get better, that things improve. No, they don't. No, they don't. Um, you have to strengthen the things that remain, the Bible says about that. Um, and you don't give those up for anyone, for any reason. I will never give up the King James Bible because there's a spiritual connection that I have. That book guides me, it leads me. Well, we, ha we found an a error or whatever else. and um, No, you didn't. Well, can you explain it? Well, not on the surface. I can't look at that and explain it, you know, whatever. But uh, I don't look for errors in the King James Bible. Um, and then a lot of these supposed errors that people come up with, um, I mean, you'd really have to be picky and really searching through the, the Bible to try to prove the Bible's wrong, which proves that there's an emotional problem there. And the things that are, uh, that are there, um, in terms of the Bible itself, it's a spiritual book. It must be spiritually discerned. Lost people can't understand it. That's why they believe it contradicts. <laughs> And if you come up with a thing, well, this guy, this, this, there's a number over here, and when he was this, he was this old when he began to reign. This one over here says he was be that old when he began to reign. Um, you just don't understand some things there. Some things might have been reckoned differently. They could have been, you know, that they, that this is the age that he officially began to reign, but this is the age where uh, he began to reign, just yet not officially or something like that. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of differences between our culture and the ancient cultures. That's not doesn't make it a contradiction. It just means that you don't understand it. Your under, understanding of the scriptures and of ancient things is deficient. It doesn't make it a contradiction. Um, you know, and if you want to get into contradictions in the scriptures, I might actually do a study on this sometime. There are contradictions in the scriptures. There's no doubt about that. It's called a non-dispensational interpretation. You get into non-dispensational interpretation of the Bible, it will contradict. If you say they preach the same gospel from Genesis to Revelation, uh, like a lot of the non-dispensationals do, um, you'll have all kinds of contradictions. You'll have all kinds of problems. Um, there are no contradictions in the Bible. There's only deficiencies in our understanding of it. Um, that's all that there is. And uh, when you've been through the scriptures many times and you've seen the miracles of God in your own life, the answers to prayer and and how you go through some kind of a situation and the Lord just goes, look at this scripture. And, it's, and you read the scripture, that's exactly what I'm seeing. It's exactly what these people said. Wow, Lord, it perfectly describes things. And you look at the world, the way the world's going, and you think, it's going towards the mark of the beast. Central bank digital currencies, they're doing implantable microchips. They're testing it. It's going exactly like the Bible said it would happen. Unless you're a historicist and you say, it already happened symbolically in the past. <laughs> anyway, there are certain heresies, brethren, you don't even have to waste any time on. You can just look at it and you say, please, uh, don't waste my time. Okay, you historicists out there, you people, you need to get saved. The Holy Spirit's not leading you. The Holy Spirit's not guiding you into that level of stupidity. I mean, it all happened in the first century. No, it didn't. So, need to get to the office, coming out of the woods here. <laughs> um, but that will be it. Don't let anybody wreck your faith in the King James Bible and study the old hymns. Thank you for watching.